Master. Welcome back to Master and Canna Master. A big topic today. Take total control of your color using the adjustments tool. Color correction, color grading. I don't think that there's one correct answer to this, and I'm not a color professional, but I am going to show you what those sliders do to allow you to actually fine tune your color instead of just slapping a filter on there. Now, it's a long topic, but I think you'll walk away knowing how to make your video look a little bit better, but still realistic. If you're interested, like, subscribe, join me on the other side, and let's get into color with the adjustment tool. The first thing I do is to set up a comparison project, which is really useful when you start doing this technique. The black clip in the background is just a placeholder. Now I add a layer with the content I want to colorize. Then I'm going to duplicate this layer. The duplicated layer will not get colorized. It's to compare. Now KineMaster has this cool feature of a split screen. Wasn't intended for this, but this slider moves back and forth. When you make changes to the color, you can compare it to the original just by sliding that top one. So let's start adjusting. Adjustment is right here on both clips and layers available to you. Now, a few things about this menu is it goes way down past where so that it does scroll all the way down here. Another couple of things about it is that little numbers actually do a lot and that with my techniques, I hardly go over 20 almost ever with anything. So let's start with the one that one's really easy to understand. Brightness is it gets really dark or it gets really hot like an exposure setting would. Now, almost all always I start out by lowering the brightness somewhat okay so I'm gonna lower it to 14 and the reason that I do this is that you're gonna see is that my Samsung takes great pictures which this is a picture from a Samsung but it almost always is what I call too hot now the second thing that I do is contrast is something and what contrast does is contrast makes things more defined it brings the blacks it makes the blacks move up harder and the lighter tones it pushes down. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it, but let's just take a look real quick. And now let's look into by just doing those two things, contrast up a little bit and brightness down a little bit. Now let's move our slider back and forth. Now to me, that looks a lot more washed out than that does. This looks like the reds are richer up here. My face and my body are more defined. It just brings more definition and kind of gets rid of the haze. And again, with my Samsungs, I always seem that this needs to be, this is a helpful, it makes the picture look better when I do that, almost automatically. So let's go into the next. Saturation we're familiar with. I don't like saturation at all. I think saturation makes things look fake really quick, and it also makes the reds go red really fast. What it is, is it is just increasing the color for every color that's in there. I sometimes turn the saturation down to get some of the reds out of my face, but what I do actually like, I'm going to leave that at zero for a second, is vibrant. And what vibrance is, is vibrance is more of an intelligent coloration. And so you can see now to me by adding in the 20s of vibrance, it really helps out with skies. Now, hopefully that to you that that looks, and again, this is to your personal taste, but for me, the sky there looks so much better on what's the left-hand side than the right-hand side. Let's move a slider back and forth again and look at the kind of washed out version. And now as we pull across, check both the greens and the blues. And I like the color that my face is becoming, and I really like the way that that red mountain on the final side looks. So by changing the vibrance, we really get this nice color range as opposed to having like kind of a fake color range that comes to me from the saturation. All right, let's go back into our adjustment menu here and we're going to go to oh, not blending. Uh, let's go into adjustment one more time and let's go ahead and talk about these two I find are really, really useful as well. And they're further down highlights and shadows. And so I'm going to explain to you what they do is that. If you think about it, I think about it as like this, is splitting exposure to lower dark colors and hotter colors. Highlights will either increase or decrease the things that are already on the hotter or white side. So as I increase this, and I'm not gonna do this here, 
I'm not going to actually use this here, but you can see that the clouds, which are already white, but there's kind of gray surrounding them, that the gray part gets brighter. And in the bushes is that the whiter parts of the bushes get brighter, but the darker parts aren't having, there's almost no change in that mountain. And this is all on the left side going on right now. So the sky is becoming a little bit more washed out in a way that we don't really want. Uh, so in this case, I probably wouldn't use it, but there's many times that adding this brightness to the parts are already bright is pretty useful very infrequently do i go in the other direction is that it really takes the lightness out of things that are already light but if i want to make a picture look darker then i might do that i might use that shadows i very frequently use to slightly increase the color in things that are on the darker side so i'm going to do this to a really extreme level and you can see that the forest is reclaiming the colors of the forest and as you can also see kind of in my chin and places like that is that i'm getting some of the color back but it's not affecting the clouds really at all so this is kind of like you can split the brightness between a darker set and a lighter set. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to return some of the green from the forest while keeping some of the other darks in there. And let's to go ahead and check our comparison where we're at again, is that for me, and you might love the way that this looks and it's all about you, but for me, this looks like the colors are richer without looking fake, that my features are defined more, that all of the lines seem to be more clear, everything about it, to me, this just feels like a better picture. And this is one of those things that people may not realize it, what they're exactly looking at, but to me, just a better picture over on this on this hand side than it is on this hand side. And these are the basic things that I almost always do. And so you'll, oh, I'm back in the, sorry about that. I was in the comparison layer. I'm going to go into here. So these are the ones for this lesson. This is really all that I'm going to talk about. And I'll do a second lesson where I talk about some of the other ones is that almost universally lower the brightness a little bit, increase the contrast. I use vibrance as opposed to saturation and use a little bit of it there. I will possibly use the highlights to increase some of the whites if it's needed. And I will often use some of the shadows to increase the darker, the, the, the visibility of the colors in the darker ones in order to give it some, um, to bring some of those out there. All right. And hopefully that wasn't too painful. Try that and and see if your video comes out looking better with just those simple ideas. And again, you know, you can go down just one or two. And one of the things about KineMaster that is the hardest for me is my big fingers have a hard time moving these sliders around, but I stick with it. I find the point on it and then I can move them one, two, you know, it's going 17, 18. So that is how I work at the outset with colorizing things that I want to look still normal, uh, but look better. And we will do another lesson about making things look more extreme. All right, hopefully I was able to teach something about color. Remember, if you like my content, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or ideas, put them down in the comments below. And get out there and make something really cool with KineMaster. And I will see you next time.